ากากากากา Happy Valentine's Day and welcome to my 18th episode of Breaking Up Dating Sims, a series where I analyze and review dating simulation games of old and somewhat new. Hatsukoi Valentine Special, translated as First Love Special and abbreviated to Hatsubare S, is one of those games that is better known in Korea than in Japan. And just like Joshi Kosei Huku Monogatari, which was also more popular in Korea, it was widely distributed due to it being a gaming magazine freebie. You know, bundle CDs. Hatsubare S is a dating sim for the PlayStation and Windows developed by FamilySoft, most well known for the Asuka 120% series, a then popular Bishojo fighting game franchise that has been sold out to DMM and then received a collaboration with an Eroge after almost three decades of its release. Since no new games by FamilySoft were released after 2000, I assume Asuka 120% went through some copyright limbo of some sort. Whatever the deal FamilySoft struck with DMM, I was able to make this review thanks to Hatsukoi Valentine Special being available in their store for the price of 940 yen, which is only accessible in Japan, but fortunately, I have a VPN. Otherwise, I would have been stuck with this inferior PlayStation port because the physical copy for Hatsubari Special's limited edition for Windows is currently selling for approximately 40,000 to 70,000 yen online. Despite being so obscure in Japan that not only an online review and a Let's Play video of this game is a rarity, the entire World Wide Web hasn't even archived the compilation video to all the endings. Although I did find at least one very passionate fan, and a now defunct website last updated in 2001 containing very detailed walkthroughs, so the demand for this game is at least greater than many other forgotten dating sims. Now, for the reason Hatsubare Special has a special attached to the title, it's because it's a remake of the first Hatsukoi Valentine. The main difference between the two is the latter having two new animation clips, additional events, overhauled game mechanics, and two new romanceable characters. The original Hatsubare was released for PlayStation on July 31, 1997. It was notorious for its frequent and slow load time and unfair gameplay. The Windows port was released in the same year on December 12, 1997. The game was rebalanced and added in some new event CGs, but slow and clunky nonetheless. Hatsubare Special, released on November 5, 1998, was supposed to be an improved remake, though it still didn't address the loading issue. The Windows port, which came about half a year later on July 16, 1999, provided a much pleasant experience. The game played much smoothly with virtually no waiting time, and finally, we could fly through the dialogue with a single keystroke. The South Korean localized title for Hatsubare was Choyeon First Love Valentine, Choyeon being a direct hanja reading of Hatsukoi's kanji. The thing is, while the word Choyeon in Korean is a homophone with definitions including premier or calm detachment, but it never means first love. And on top of that, the publishers chose to keep the original Japanese kanji logo. Therefore, the kanji for koi or ren, written in a simplified form ren, was not converted to yeon, a traditional form of the same Chinese character which is recognized in Korea. Though this awkward title might have helped Hatsukoi Valentine in becoming one of the more memorable dating sims in South Korea, because the word Choyeon and Valentine is almost never written side by side in any context. Hatsubare for Windows, localized as Choyeon, was released in South Korea on March 1998, so only three months after the Japanese port, which was quite fast by the day's standards. It gained notoriety for its hilariously bad translation and equally offhanded Korean dub. And a year later, on March 1999, South Korean gaming magazine PC Player provided Choyeon as a bundle CD complete with a walkthrough for consumers who purchased their magazines. Then only 8 months later, on November 1999, another gaming magazine called PC Game Magazine gave away Choyeon Special as their own bundle CD. Note that the Japanese Hatsubare Special for Windows was out only 4 months ahead. According to the Game Rating and Administration Committee in South Korea, Choyeon Special was registered on October 1999, the same month it was provided as a bundle CD for PC Game Magazine, and it specifically stated on the magazine's cover that it's an exclusive, unreleased official game, probably a result of some shady deal behind the scenes. It was during the warring era of the bundle CDs after all. Choyeon Special was redubbed to have overall better voice acting, but the retranslation still left much to be desired. The dubcast must have felt so awkward reading those lines. Now with that out of the way, let's finally get into the game. But before going any deeper, I must say, though I'm reviewing Hatsubare today, the actual game has little to do with Valentine's Day besides the title. 
one or two characters has an event and a CG on Valentine's Day, and the day could mean a little bit more depending on the way we beat the game, but that's about it. And while this video will focus on Hatsukoi Valentine's special, I will draw comparison to the original prequel Hatsukoi Valentine when needed. Like other Gero games made by FamilySoft, the biggest strength of Hatsubare is its artwork. The graphics team was pretty big, even getting an animation studio involved. The standing sprites are immaculately drawn and were given attention to a lot of detail matching the character's personality. When most games cut costs by changing only the facial expression from the same graphic, each main romanceable character in Hatsubare features an impressive number of standing sprites with various poses corresponding to different emotions. They have at least 8 sprites in school uniforms, 4 per everyday outfit on dates, and taking account of two types of uniforms and seasonal clothing, it sums up to a minimum of 32 standing sprites, and that's without factoring in their exclusive outfits, such as swimwear, club activity clothes, and yukatas. And of course, all of them come with unique poses. It's not like the game is short of main heroines. We have 10, 12 including the two characters added in Hatsubare Special, but I'll exclude them for now since they're an outlier in terms of character art. Furthermore, even the minor characters have several outfits and poses per emotional expression. My assumption is the total number of standing sprites in Hatsubare will easily surpass 400. Now that's intensive labor, albeit an inefficient one. And it was probably caused by poor communication. The production was all over the place. We often see some characters inappropriately laughing or blushing in a serious situation, despite all the standing sprites in their arsenal. During my research on Choyeon, I've read quite a few recollections from the fans about their female siblings being more invested in the game, and I did find more comments from women saying Choyeon was part of their childhood. Girls playing bishoujo games weren't exactly that rare, especially in the 90s. The first reason being they can't afford to be picky when there were only a few otome games in the market. And the second reason is, girls are conditioned to feel comfortable about liking pretty girls, regardless of their sexual orientation. That could explain why so many girls played Princess Maker 2, despite it being a originally targeted towards male otakus, bishoujo games, in a way, could have felt like one of those flash dress-up games. Another reason why Hatsubare seems to have more vocal female fans may be due to its art style, which has a shoujo vibe to it. Plus, the characters are very well-dressed compared to other bishoujo characters of the time. Girls from retro dating sims, as cute as they are, usually didn't have a commendable taste in outfits for everyday use. Hats off to the Hatsubare girls on their choice of fashion, and they even have different hairdos matching each outfit. A bold choice too, when so many bishoujo characters, even to this day, are but clones with different wigs. Yet it displays another case of miscommunication between the writers and the graphics team. Like, some of their outfits don't match the girl's character type. This is a character who is stated in-game that she dresses only in men's clothes. But again, metrosexual fashion may be a huge fad in this society. Or a working student with a family to take care of who's barely squeezing a break from her hectic schedule, dressing quite elegantly. Though putting prejudice aside, she may be wearing her mom's clothes. And I don't know why more Hatsubare players aren't mentioning this, but the protagonist's male friends really set off my Hojoshi radar. The character designer and artist for Hatsubare was Habara Yoshikazu, who previously worked with FamilySoft on PlayStation adventure game Metamore Panic Doki Doki Yoma Busters. Not only Habara illustrated novels for girls, she had a career in BL manga and BL doujinshis. Chances are, I probably read one of her Hoshin Engi works back in the day. Despite the guy friends getting like two events and not even having a friendship ending, Habara made it a point to include them in CGs on any given opportunity. Like how they're in the main illustration for the original Hatsubare when they barely qualify as side characters. On top of the standing sprites, all romanceable characters are accompanied by an abundance of CGs, and all of them, I mean most of them, are drawn exquisitely. Too bad the game doesn't have a gallery mode in the title menu. Unless you're playing the first Hatsubare for Windows, which is the only version of the game where we can access the gallery mode from the title screen. Hatsubare S does have an album mode, but it's only an in-game option that let us review the CGs we've collected in that particular playthrough. And on top of that, we can't erase the dialogue window during events to take a good look at the full illustration. I think FamilySoft was trying to sell art books. Seeing how they did print out art books and a bunch of desktop accessories related to the game upon its release, which at least proves that they knew art was the biggest selling point for this franchise. Speaking of art, I would also like to mention the chibi animations used in the command execution screen. While chibis used in the original Hatsubare were… okay, the overhaul chibis in Hatsubare Special are absolutely adorable. They're so cute. Now, you might have also noticed one of the most horrendous UIs in any dating sim. The title screen alone sends an impression that the game is way shittier than it actually is. 
Where should I start? This weird decorative frame doesn't fit the game at all. And these buttons look like it was made with the default emboss layer style in Photoshop. Why is the background riddled with default Photoshop marble patterns? It does nothing but look messy. On top of that, the stat UI is unnecessarily huge, so sometimes it entirely covers up the cute standing sprites. Since the previous Hatsubaris also looked like a last-minute botch job with pretty CGs, obviously no one from the giant graphics team were invested in creating good-looking GUI. The font in Hatsubaris Special is narrow and spaced too far between. First I thought the problem was my windows not being set on Japanese locale, but no, that's just the way it is. At least the game lets us change the in-game fonts from the options in the title menu, like the developers knew that it looks like shit. But we still need to change the setting every time we start the game, and in case we forget to do this, of course we can't tinker the option while playing the game. We also don't have an option to go back to the title screen, so our only choice is to turn off the game. So far, Hatsubari seems like a not-so-good-looking game despite its great character art. That goes for the gameplay too. Thus I'm here, complaining again. The in-game time for Hatsukoi Valentine consists of two years. We can name the protagonist, but he comes with a default name, Kinoshita Tokichi. Tokichi is a second-year student in Momoyama Private High School. It is said he lived in his hometown all his life, and he has not one but four childhood friends who all happen to be cute girls. Basically, he's a guy born into a harem romance. The game begins with Tokichi in his adult years on a subway reminiscing his high school days. In case you're wondering, yes, the protagonist is named after Kinoshita Tokichiro, the name Hashiba Hideyoshi used before he became the Daijo Daijin Toyotomi Hideyoshi, who was the de facto head of Japan during the late 16th century. Just like Hideyoshi, he's even nicknamed Monkey. Hatsubare is one of those games with characters named after famous people from the Sengoku period, like how the four childhood friends happen to have the surname Oda, Takeda, Sanada, and Saito. Tokichi received the name change in the Korean version, perhaps because of the concern over having a protagonist who's an interpretation of Hideyoshi might offend the locals, considering him invading Korea and all the modern history between the two countries. Or it was just heavy-duty paraphrasing. He was renamed Arima Shoichi of all people, and while his and her circumstances was popular in Korea at the time, probably no one who played Choyeon would have heard the name Kinoshita Tokichiro. Our objective as a player is the same old, same old. Raise stats, date girls, and receive or give a love confession on Valentine's Day at the last year of high school, hence the title. As we start the game, we get to edit Tokichi's profile. Because we can't input kanji, his name will be in either hiragana or katakana or in alphabets, unless we're sticking with his default name. We can also name the younger sister. By the way, her default name is Nene, which is mostly known as a former name for Kodain, who's Hideyoshi's wife. As expected, the Korean localization name for Nene is Yukino, almost like naming your kids Adam and Eve. The heroines with the same blood type as the protagonist receive a plus 10 affection bonus. At least the developers are keeping things simple instead of following that blood type compatibility nonsense. One unique feature to Hatsubare is that it lets us decide on the career Tokichi's parents are working in. This affects his initial stats or money. Only in the original Hatsubare for Windows, we can make both parents unemployed. Should you do so, the game starts with a different prologue where Tokichi abruptly makes marriage proposals to his childhood friends only to get ignored or rejected. The game ends right there, stating that Tokichi had to quit school to pay off the huge debt accumulated by his parents. After the very long prologue, which thankfully we have an option to skip, we get to actually play the game. Like most classic dating sims, love requires adequate stats. The thing is, stat rising mechanics in Hatsubare is quite absurd. Not absurd in a confusing way like Mitsume Tonight, but in a reminds me of Rose Knight kind of way. We have only 5 stats, Charm, Academics, Athletics, Guts, and Stress. That's technically 4, and by the sound of it, stat raising doesn't seem like much of a challenge. Then we find out our weekly schedule menu is… incomprehensible. I'll try my best to explain. In the most basic level, Hatsubare follows the Tokimeki Memorial format. From the schedule menu, we decide on the action Tokichi would undertake during the weekdays. Our options include studying, exercising, doing club activities, resting, and part-time job. Then, we go on to choose on the manner in which he performs the action. One manner being the ways of the tough guy, Koha, and the other being the ways of the playboy, Nanpa. And then we go on to decide the extremity of his manner. The leftmost row states he'll go hardcore tough guy, and the rightmost states he'll take playboy to the extreme. While acting a tough guy raises guts but lowers charm, taking the path of the playboy raises charm but lowers guts. 
Studying lowers athletics. Exercise lowers academics. Being hardcore will affect the stats to a greater degree with the cost of accumulating more stress. So let's say we study like a hardcore tough guy. Each time we gain plus 3 in academics and guts, but lose 2 in each athletics and charm. That's a net gain of 2 stat points with an additional 3 stress points. Depending on the heroine, our stats should reach at least 130-ish within 2 years for their best endings, which is doable. However, some of them require all 4 stats to exceed a certain number, and this is where the gameplay becomes limited. Go full gear on hardcore tough guy on either studying or exercise. And by about November of the first year when the two stats are almost maxed out at 300, reverse gear and go hardcore playboy on the other subject. We still lose stats, but just enough to see the romantic ending. While doing so, take advantage of the Sunday menu. On Sunday and holidays, we can choose to study, exercise, do club activities, or part-time jobs. Stat raising commands during the weekends will not deduct the charm and gut stat. Use this time to make up for the stats we're lacking. Clubs contribute little to the game other than needing to join one to see an ending for a certain sub-character. Actually, we can jump around clubs on a whim every week. We're even free to rejoin the club we quit without any penalty at all. Being in the same club as the heroines raises their affection. Stress accumulates with every command. Notice the rest command which reduces stress is not available on the weekends. Our only option to alleviate stress during this time is to hang out with the younger sister. It takes away tenant stress, although we will lose a weekend in case she refuses. At least the game is not being discreet about her having her own ending. Greater stress leads to a higher chance of failure while executing each command. Stress also factors in with school exams. Even with high academics, having high stress will result in flunking. In conclusion, stat raising is a pain in the ass and counterintuitive, especially for someone used to other stat raising games like Tokimeki Memorial. Although Hatsubari Special was kind enough to give us a consolation prize even when we failed in achieving the required stats. Now, let's talk about some romantic stuff. Like most dating sims, each heroine has an affection stat, and it piles up by talking to them, dating, and doing something unique to this game, giving them love letters. At the start of every week, we are given an option to handwrite a letter. The subject of the letter corresponds to the protagonist's stats. We have many topics to choose from though every girl has a subject they prefer. We can possess up to three letters at once. The letter can be sent on Saturdays. Lunchtime on Saturday opens up with three additional options. We can choose to roam around school without a plan, catch up on studies, or gamble for some money. As a side note, Momoyama High School must be a private institution that has a full school day on a Saturday. I remember even in the days when Saturdays were school days, most schools used to end at noon before lunch. Roaming around the school may lead to an encounter with one of the heroines. Each of them has a favorite location so our chances are not completely at random. Upon meeting her, we can choose to talk, give a letter, or run away. This is one of three letter delivery methods, the other being sneaking it in her shoe cabinet. The heroine will make comments on the letter next time she comes across the protagonist. Using the shoe cabinet may cause the letter to be misdelivered, which is pretty funny. In Hatsubare and the PlayStation port of Hatsubare Special, the girls respond with their own letter, and we can read them on the end of the month. It's a neat feature, but was taken out in the Windows port of Hatsubare S for some reason. The lunchtime conversations consist of various topics that changes accordingly each month. Even the sub-characters get the same treatment. Saturday does not end with lunchtime. The after-school option is like overtime to the lunchtime menu. Besides lurking around the school gate until some girls pass by, the protagonist can participate in club activities or go to his part-time job. Spotting a random heroine while lurking around leads to three options. We can either let her pass like any normal person should, give her love letter, or stalk her like a creep. When she notices the protagonist, he feigns coincidence and asks her to walk home together. Whether she accepts or not depends on her affection stat. The after-school conversations are as diverse as the lunchtime one. The girls talk about their everyday lives or seasonal events, and in another moment of oversight by the developers breaking off immersion, they talk regardless of whether or not the event has already taken place, like asking if you're prepared for the upcoming exam after they've already taken it. We can check the affection stats on Saturday by visiting Sachiko, the sole member of the newspaper club. Like Yoshio from Tokimemo, she's an information broker who provides the affection level and personal info on the heroines. However, Sachiko's intention is clearer. Tabloid reported at heart, we must pay for her service. This includes getting info about the sub-characters. She'll sell her own info too. 
Every female sub-characters are romanceable, but their affection ratings remain hidden. We can technically call them up for a date, but the game skips over to the end of the day, so we can only assume they had a good time together. For the guy friends, they indeed have a hidden affection stat and we could call them and hang out, but I'm pretty sure they don't have endings. As I'm showing here, affections are presented in numeric values. Each of the columns from left to right indicates romantic progression, hurt feelings, and ideals. Romantic progression is just affection rating, not much to say about this. Hurt feeling stat is similar to how it works in Tokimemo, but with a little twist. It increases when not dating a heroine for a long time, delivering wrong love letters, choosing the wrong dialogue options, refusing to walk home with her, running away on a Saturday encounter, and doing an activity they don't like during the weekdays. Yep, she will hate you for working out when she'd rather have you study. Sounds like the beginning of an unhealthy relationship. Thankfully, its effect is minuscule. Once a girl's hurt feeling surpasses 20, Sachiko spreads scandalous rumors on the school tabloid, causing a drop in affection for all the characters. However, hurt feelings isn't much of a threat in this game, since they won't stack up as long as their affection remains low. It's not that uncommon to go through the entire game without activating a single bomb. We should still be wary, since affection may instantly boost without us trying too hard, such as doing well in school events. The ideal stat is dependent on the protagonist's current stats. They are shown in levels, max being 10, and each heroine has different stat requirements per level. The main heroines in Hatsuvarai have two endings, a best ending and a normal ending. The best ending requires an affection stat of 120, ideal level of 8, and clearing a chain of sequential events. These events are triggered only once the affection stat and ideal level reaches a certain requirement, and all of them are time sensitive. But the game's not completely heartless. As if the developers knew how absurd the conditions for the best endings are, they've literally written down the requirements and time limit in the Hatsumari Special Game Manual. They call it a hint, but it's technically spoon-feeding us with a walkthrough. Unfortunately, unlike GOG, retro games bought from DMM do not include images of all the documents related to the product. Fortunately, a passionate Japanese Hatsubare fan uploaded it on their website. Plus, the walkthrough website is accessible via Wayback Machine. So once we familiarize ourselves with the stat rising and with the help from the game's manual, the best ending isn't that much of a hassle. Even if you don't have the manual or fail to reach the required ideal level within the set time frame, all is not lost. Because the normal ending only requires having high enough affection, and content-wise, the normal ending is not necessarily inferior to the best ending. Either way, the two of them seem to live happily ever after. Besides, the normal ending actually takes place on Valentine's Day, and the game title does contain the word Valentine, compared to the best endings which happens a month before. So might as well call the normal ending the real best ending. Ending conditions for the original Hatsubare were a lot brutal than Hatsubare special. Gamers back then called it a kusoge, and I can't blame them. For one, the requirements for reaching an ideal level or even getting a certain heroine to show up were way more strict. Remember me saying earlier we must give up two stats in order to raise the other two stats? The best ending for the first Hatsubare requires all four stats to reach a certain value within a couple of months, and that's almost impossible to find out without a walkthrough. And I only came across this info not because the game dropped any hints, but because someone, for the sake of good nostalgia, scanned a walkthrough for Choyeon from a Korean gaming magazine. Worst thing is, even the normal ending needs an adequate ideal level. One playthrough on Nico video, the player traversed many hours of redundant stat raising and excruciatingly slow loading times, and then she's abruptly greeted with a black screen. Then the end credits roll. Considering the game was released during the golden age of dating sims, and FamilySoft already having a reputation for developing visually appealing Karu guests, Hatsukoi Valentine fit every bill for success. With all that hard work done on the graphics, they squandered that opportunity because of shit gameplay. A real shame. I briefly mentioned that we can gamble on Saturdays. The gambling is a simple Cho Han game, where we guess whether the outcome of a dice roll is odd or even. We can wager up to 1000 yen and repeat it as often as we want, as long as we have money. Thing is, money is pretty much obsolete in Hatsubare Special. I even have doubts on its usefulness in the prequel. Money can do two things, paying Sachiko for information and paying dating costs. And in the ways of the beautiful standing sprites, the dating in Hatsubare Special is lazy and uncreative. Unlike Tokimemo and many other dating sims, we can't set up a date in advance. Every date has to happen on the same day we're calling the girl. And don't even worry about her favorite dating spot. 
This may sound confusing, but the game gives us 3 to 4 date locations per month. But instead of letting us choose the place, dating spots are imposed upon us consecutively in rotation. Let's say you want to see a certain character in her yukata, but the summer festival takes place in the fourth date of the month. Therefore, you must date her three times on the same month just to see her wearing a yukata on her next date. This sometimes leads to situations that don't make sense in any context. After both of them got dressed and meet up at the station, Tokichi then comes up with a plan to go to the beach. He casually states, let's go back home and get our swimsuits, then rendezvous here again. And the girl reacts by nonchalantly agreeing despite it being a major failure in communication even for a pre-cell phone era. The date itself is the same old choose the right dialogue game. And it offers us no event CGs because CGs are reserved for events that automatically occurs under sufficient affection stat and idea level. Having money in Hatsubare S may give you an impression that we must pay for the date. But the game does not penalize us for having no money. Dating while broke works just the same. Money is deducted only if you are in any possession of it. This specific jankiness is a result of Hatsubare Special completely overhauling the dating mechanics from the original Hatsubare. The dating in Hatsubare was quite different. They still don't let us plan ahead, but in here, we can actually choose a dating spot out of 20 locations from the town map. We can't access these locations without enough money, with an exception for free places like the park. But this isn't exactly a case about a great game being butchered in the remastered version. Even then, our dating experience was limited. Out of the 20, only 3 to 4 have conversations and dialogue choices related to the location. So I think any other location will directly jump to the dialogue choice about physically engaging with the girl. Hold hands, cross arm, put arm around shoulder. But the locations with the unique conversation patterns do shift every month. To give an example, having a zoo date on September leads to a dialogue choice related to them being in the zoo. But going to the place at any other time of the year will only give us the same old how you're gonna touch her option. Now you'll see what Hatsubari Special did here. Rather than adding more conversation variations per dating spot, they removed the option to select the date location which doesn't have a unique dialogue choice. Consequently, the money mechanic got destroyed, but instead of fixing the issue, they simply pasted a script to subtract money every time the protagonist goes out with a character. Even hanging out with his sister cost 2,000 yen, when it cost nothing in the prequel. Unless we're short of change, that is. Like I aforementioned in this video, when our money is low, the game proceeds like money don't exist in this world. We still have to pay Sachiko for info every so often, so spending few weekends on a part-time job will be enough to get us going. Today in hindsight, the girls from Tokimeki Memorial almost seemed like an archetype of popular bishojo tropes from the late 90s to the early 2000s. But at the time of its release, some criticized it for having almost all the romantic interests belonging to the same age as the protagonist. That's more realistic in a sense, especially when the game is set in high school, but variety is always welcome. Out of the 12 romanceable characters in Hatsubare Special, 4 are juniors and we have 1 from a senior grade. Among the 5 romanceable sub-characters, 2 of them are teachers and 1 is the protagonist's little sister. So the characters are certainly not lacking in terms of variety. The problem is, of all the 17 heroines, I personally felt no attachment to any of them. In most character-driven games, there are at least one or more characters I come to favor, no matter how bad the game may be. But despite the gorgeous artwork and plentiful character events, I found the love interests to be pretty bland. For a dating sim, that's not good. I'm not saying the girls are too generic. And if Meguri Aishite taught me anything, a character being generic is not even a problem as long as they are well written. In fact, the plot of Hatsubare is quite dramatic. It just fails to deliver that emotional punch, and I found some of them being noticeably unreasonable. I have a pretty low bar when it comes to writing and dating sims, but I felt the drama isn't earned, and the story isn't even trying to convince me on whether any of their emotional responses are plausible. More so, the obvious lack of detail during important character moments really takes me out of the setting. For example, a girl gets very upset at Tokichi and slaps him in June. This leads to a sequential event where Tokichi apologizes to her which happens in September. But during those 3 months, we can interact with her including going on a date, and even a romantic event takes place between the slapping and apologizing, like nothing ever happened in the first place. It's like the developers are trying really hard to make a point that she's nothing more than a badly organized pile of codes. And one way or another, this is the case for every single heroine. The oversights do not end there. Some girls show up in certain events even if they haven't yet made an appearance in the game, and of course the protagonists and girls treat each other like acquaintances. 
Tokiji occasionally reminisce about our heroine with a slideshow of her event CGs, including the ones that never took place in the gameplay. This implies either the developers didn't give a damn about continuity, or that Tokiji habitually creates false memory. On top of all the inconsistencies, more often than not, I found some of the game design to be quite lazy. Most dating sims set in a school feature school trips, club training week, sports festivals, culture festivals, and other annual events as an opportunity to close the distance with the heroines. Hatsubare Special has almost none of that. Few school events that do exist are represented with a single illustration shared by every character. And as you've predicted by now, characters who are absent at the game are still present in the CG. I'm not done yet. The game has no Christmas events and no New Year's events, which I thought was prerequisites for any dating sim situated around the holiday season. Hatsubare Special did add a shrine as one of the dating spots for January, so it's better than nothing I guess. These might be just trivial things, but it just shows how much the developers cared. And about the voices. I don't mind that Hachibare special was only partially voiced, but a character being voiced halfway through one of their events really testifies to its lack of planning. Sure, a lot of work was poured into the graphics and school conversations, but the sheer sloppiness of how everything was put together breaks the immersion so much so that I simply can't care about the characters anymore. At least that's how I felt, and I know ultimately, it's up for the players to decide. Next, let's move on and introduce the characters. Kasumi is Tokichi's first childhood friend and the title heroine of Hatsubare. And of course she's been in love with Tokichi since childhood. She's also a good chef and dreams of one day becoming a perfect bride. It's implied that she's popular with the boys, but it's never shown in-game. She's something of an experimental case for a title heroine because she transfers out of the country after a year, which means we're at a time limit on meeting the requirements for her ending. Aya is the second childhood friend of Tokichi, and to the surprise of no one, she too is in love with him. But contrary to the kind and gentle Kasumi, she's the bickering type of a childhood friend. And unlike Kasumi, she's a tomboy who likes sports and prefers wearing quote-unquote men's clothing. Aya is also the most likely heroine to be the bomber in the game, since she appears from the very start and her initial affection is slightly higher than average. Yukie, a member of the Rhythmic Gymnastics Club who's a one-year senior to Tokichi, is his third childhood friend. She also happens to be the only heroine with glasses. Though she is a typical sexy onesang, she's the only childhood friend who does not have initial feelings towards the protagonist because she thinks of him as a little brother. Therefore, Tokichi has to prove that he's a strong, independent man by slapping her in the face when she's feeling down after being rejected by her crush. Haruna is a popular idol and the fourth childhood friend who is two years younger than Tokichi. She's also best friends with his little sister, Nene. Her first appearance feels rather abrupt, where she greets Tokichi out of the blue on the beginning of his third year. The PlayStation port of Hatsubare S had two events leading up to it, and I don't know why it was taken out of the Windows version. Chiaki is one year junior to Tokichi. She's one of those frail, bookworm characters, though she admires athletic types over someone well-versed in literature. Her best ending does require a bit of the academic stat, however. Sakura is the sheltered Yamato Nadeshiko girl coming from a long lineage of traditional Japanese dancers. She goes out of her way to wear a full kimono for a normal date. Imagine how long it must take when she goes to the swimming pool. Being the only heir to the family, her main conflict is about choosing between her dreams or her duty. Yoko is the uptight chundere who's a member of the student council. Our first encounter with Yoko involves her striking and screaming at Tokichi, and seeing some otakus consider any degree of physical violence towards the protagonist makes the perpetrator worse than Hitler, I'm guessing she was not a fan favorite. Like many of these character types, she's strict yet nurturing to her two younger brothers. She's also shown to reside in probably the most gigantic house in Japan. Reika is another poor lonely girl who's born into a super rich family. And like the rest of the lonely rich girls from a bishoujo genre, she's gaslighted into accepting her neglectful father, who technically forces her into an arranged marriage. He does not pressure her to marry, at least in his words, while emphasizing the financial benefit the potential union will bring to her loving family. And the writers are 100% on his side, without a doubt he's a good father. Which isn't the first time this happened, and won't be the last. Asami is a one-year junior to Tokichi. She's all play and no work, but still cute. However, her carefree personality is sometimes a bit too much, like standing Tokichi up on a date and unintentionally leaving his love letter for everyone to see, but she does undergo change. Eri is the shy one. She's another member of the Rhythmic Gymnastics Club and a two-year junior to Yukie, whom she holds in great regard. 
Eddie is known to have the hardest difficulty for her best standing because the way the ideal level works. It increases once Tokichi's stat reaches the required standard for the ideal to move on to the next level. And for most characters, increasing lower ideal levels requires only 1-2 to two stats to hit a certain value, and the difficulty gets steeper from there on. However for Eri, proceeding with her ideal level, even at its lowest, requires increasing 3 stats plus a particularly high standard for charm. One of the additional heroines for Hatsubari Special is Nami. She's a transfer student from Tokyo, but more importantly, she has a crow on her shoulder. The crow sounds super weird too, like a grown human poorly imitating a crow. No one in the game touches on any of this, so I initially thought she was in fact a comic relief character who, contrary to her over-the-top emo demeanor, is regularly seen with a crow plushie which she ventriloquizes. I have some evidence to back this up. In one of IS event CGs, we can find an extra that looks like Nami and she even has a cat plushie on her shoulders. My theory was, she's an inspiring ventriloquist who hangs around with different plushie buddies depending on her mood. I was disappointed to find out that Nami is just a self-proclaimed cinephile and a budding movie director who's into major Hollywood motion pictures like the Titanic. Akira is the other new heroine. For being Aya's basketball team friend, she's never seen in-game playing basketball. She also cosplays and draws original doujinshis. Akira is probably the worst looking heroine in Hatsubari Special, only because the new character arch noticeably took a nose dive in quality. Both Nami and Akira lack standing sprites, and don't even have everyday outfits for each season. They don't have yukatas, and their swimsuit sprites look bland to bad compared to the original main heroines. Also, we can't give them birthday gifts, and their normal and best endings are exactly the same. Nami's art was still passable in my opinion, but the graphics team weren't kind to Akira. In Habara Yoshikaze's now defunct website, on her list of works, she specifies that she was only responsible for the character designs for Hatsubari Special. I think that's her way of saying that she was not involved in the in-game CGs. Yuko is Tokichi's homeroom teacher and one of the two romanceable teachers. Just like how Tokichi can change clubs on the go, she's the advisor for literally every single club in Momoyama High. The game completely ignores the fact that the basketball team already has an advisor character. The second romanceful teacher is Makiko, the kind and mature school nurse who cares greatly for the students. Sachiko, like many characters in the trope, is the tabloid reporter who makes up facts and exposes someone else's vulnerability for views. I really like her character design, but she's too morally corrupt for my tastes, and not in a fun way. Also, her ending CG sucks. As expected, this was one of the newly added in CGs. I'm pretty sure it's done by the same person who worked on Akira. Hakari is the gambler who only exists so the protagonist can extort money from her. Doing part-time jobs works just as well, so we can ignore her altogether unless we're going for her romantic ending. Nene, who I mentioned before, is the protagonist's little sister, and indeed, she's romanceable. I'll just tell right off the bat, she isn't related by blood, which is boring. In the original Hatsubare, it's revealed that Nene was Tokichi's arranged bride all along, and by some sick fantasy, their parents chose to raise them as siblings. In Hatsubari Special, Nene got a whole new expanded lore about her being the love child between Tokichi's dad's rich friend and a woman he wasn't supposed to love, which still looks bad on their parents. Sayo appears in the old building of Momoyama High if Tokichi's gut stat reaches a certain point. It's difficult to tell by the looks because she's wearing a modern uniform, but the truth is she's a 50-year-old ghost. Sayo is a powerful specter who can manifest physical materials into existence, so maybe she beat up another, younger ghost and took her clothes away. Tokichi can come across Hubuki while she's shredding on her guitar in the streets. She's a rock and roll girl who strongly resembles someone he knows. He does mention that to her and she brushes it off. It is possible to go out on dates with Hubuki after getting her info from Sachiko. Hirohisa and Junsuke are Tokichi's male friends. Hirohisa is that friend character in classic bishoujo media who hits on every girl and gets rejected all the time, and Junsuke is the cool one who has a crush on Aya. Should Aya's hurt feelings that go over 20, Junsuke reveals his nice guy side and beats up Tokichi for hurting her feelings. He does end up marrying Aya in the bad ending where Tokichi ends up with no one. A self-proclaimed rival, Jin sucks Tokichi to every club he joins. He will accompany Tokichi in his chibi command execution when he's not close to any of the heroines, and the only non-heroine character to do so. If he's in an arch-related club, Tokichi is forced to face him in a contest in the culture festival. I smell something suspicious and tried to find out if he at least has a hidden ending, but I came to a stop with no avail. I know for a fact at least he has one event CG, but never saw it in my multiple playthroughs. 
In my Meguri Aishite video, I said the game might have gained a cult following had the artwork been better. Hatsukoi Valentine Special is a good example of that. Despite its many incompetence that only it is remembered fondly by some old fans, the limited edition is still selling for a premium. If we give a blind eye to the UI, Hatsubare Special was a pretty game to look at. Even if the player fumbled through the stat raising and didn't know the deal about ideal levels, the game offered plenty of pretty graphics and event CGs, and unless the player already knew about the best ending, they wouldn't have noticed that they're being punished for sucking because the normal ending really is good enough. So for those who don't know what to expect from a dating sim, Hachibari Special was probably a pretty game with cute girls which rewards you with that dopamine rush upon beating it to the end. I can see why it became a fond childhood memory to some people. On the other hand, for gamers who understood the game mechanic and had prior knowledge about the genre probably would have found the whole experience redundant, especially with the shitty stat raising part and the tedious time limit. And Hachibari Special is balanced in a way that is strongly recommended to dedicate an entire gameplay from beginning to the end, to one character if we're going for her true and normal endings without missing a single event. That's at least 12 playthroughs. And yes, I did it. At least they let me skip texts. And that about does it. Thanks for watching as I'm probably ranked as the undisputed number one Hachibare player to this date. Hope you found this fun and or useful in some way. Be seeing you in the next video.